Gallimera, 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 good morning, good morning. I know you're thinking to yourself, Ginge, this is early. Uh, well, the reason is, is Jane again is off guiding all day up at the, I think she's doing turtles today or she might, I can't remember where she's going. But anyway, she's out guiding today. You'll probably see her out and about if you're here on the island. It's a beautiful morning this morning as well. And uh, can I just say, uh, the weather at the moment is going to be absolutely phenomenally hot. Big shout out to Dave Matthews, who's up with the larks this morning. Nice to see you looking in, fella. But at the moment, uh, I got a little message from the lovely Amanda about the weather. She said, morning, Ginge. Uh, weather on Monday, hot, hot, hot. Uh, sunny and warm. Highs of 30 degrees, but feel, will feel like 35 have a great day. Well, I'm doing a little bit of research on the weather. It seems that uh, summertime officially starts today. And that means today will be the longest in daylight hours, as always. And the and this year, it is the first day of a heat wave that is going to follow closely. According to uh, the meteorologists here, temperatures will start rising today. And between Tuesday and Friday, maximums will hover between 38 and 41 degrees Celsius in a large part of mainland Greece. Uh, seaside locations will be three to four degrees lower. At least with the exception of Tuesday, moderate winds will somewhat migrate the heat, especially the, in Eastern Greece. So again, uh, that's not really us in Eastern Greece. Um, we're more Southern Greece at the moment, but uh, to be honest, uh, it is gonna be very, very hot. Uh, Dave Matthews just said, I've just taken my wife to work. Bless you. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's have a quick look at flights for today. Quite quiet today at the airport. Uh, we've got two flights in from Athens. Uh, we've got one flight in from Amsterdam. We've got two flights in from Italy, from Milan. Uh, we've got one flight in from Zurich, uh, Switzerland. And uh, we only have one flight in from Poland today. So uh, that's the activity at the airport. I wouldn't exactly say it's overly busy today down there. However, um, COVID in the last 24 hours is looking really good at the moment in regards infections. In fact, I've got quite a bit about COVID today. Uh, COVID in the last 24 hours, it's down again on yesterday. 248 new infections across the country. That's down from 392 on the previous day. Uh, at the moment, that means there's been 418,342 cases since the pandemic started. Oh, way back, all right. Uh, as for uh, entry into the countries, new cases identified, that is up slightly. Uh, we did have four the other day. We've had seven uh, just within the last 24 hours. Uh, when it comes to the national stats uh, regards infections, at the moment we are still have had no new infections reported here. Only areas that have double, fig double digit figures uh, get a mention, but at the moment, no new infections here on Zakynthos, still keeping us at six infections since the beginning of June, which is good. Uh, as for critical cases, that's also down as well by a little bit. Um, 301 last reported to you. We're now down to 296 infections across the country of people in ICUs. That's 192 male and 104 females. Again, the average age of those people, 68 years of age uh, and... Um, what do you call it, <laughs> 68 years of age, and 83% of them had uh, underlying health issues. Uh, when it comes to deaths at the moment, uh, deaths at the moment, they are down uh, from uh, 20 uh, reported to you on my last broadcast, uh, has gone down to 14 new deaths. That's 15,548 since the pandemic started. Once again, our condolences to those families that are affected. So all in all, the epidemiology at the moment is looking good. And just to show how good it, it, it's looking at the moment, I've actually got the map for you. So I'm going to switch the camera around again. Again, uh, good. That's it's working. My God. Anyway, uh, the epidemiology data for Greece uh, has not included any red areas for a long time. Uh, most prefectures are in yellow, which is level two. Uh, that's where we are at the moment. Uh, no, sorry, we're in the green. This is Zakynthos here. I've got. You can see that we're in green here. Uh, this here is. Um, 
Cephalonia, they're also in the green. Beside that, we've got Ithaca, uh, they're also in the green. And just at the top there, we have got Corfu. And uh, so, as you can see, the rest of the country at the moment uh, is either in yellow here, which is level two. This is the Peloponnese. Uh, they are in the next level below us. Uh, these are in the higher areas where they're going up. But again, no one is in the red. And that is absolutely awesome. That should stand us in good stead uh, when Boris, if he does make his decisions. Also looking at area of Crete as well. Crete is half green at that end. I think that's the end of uh, Rhythmos around that local area. And then obviously the rest of the, the rest of the island there is in the second stage. So again, uh, the epidemiology for Greece is looking good. Obviously Athens around that area, uh, they are still in level three. Uh, which is uh, slightly higher and uh, means that they've got a slightly higher infection rate. But again, they've had the, some of the highest infection rates in the whole of um, in the whole of Greece anyway. Now, um, the other thing we're going to just quickly talk about from the epidemiology picture as well is the record vaccination coverage that's been recorded uh, as well at the moment. Uh, Zakynthos's uh, vaccination coverage is at least uh, one dose and 44.34% of the population here has had at least one dose. While uh, those people have completed a two dose uh, regime, 32.24% uh, of people here on the island have uh, actually uh, had the double jab. This, uh, Jane is one of those of the 32.24%. When it comes to the uh, test positivity index that's running at 0.2 percent and the rolling seven day average per 100,000 inhabitants uh, is at the moment believe it or not 0.7 so our our actual trend now is de described as declining now when you look at Kefalonia Kefalonia uh, vaccination coverage there with at least one dose, 48.22% of the population there have had it. Uh, when it comes to complete inoculations then, 38.6% of the uh, island has had that. Testing positivity index is 0.01% there, and their rolling seven-day average per 100,000 inhabitants is 0.3%. Uh, and uh, their um, standing at the moment or weekly trend is classed as declining as well. Now, Lefkada, which is the one of the smallest islands in the Ionian, they've been pretty uh, okay, actually. However, it's uh, interesting that uh, their um, uh, 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 stats are, are, are different. Uh, vaccination coverage for that island is 65.33%. Uh, 51.27% uh, have had both of the vaccinations, while um yeah basically uh 51.27 have had uh, completed all of their vaccinations at the moment um the test positivity index there is 0.03 percent and their rolling seven day average per 100,000 inhabitants is slightly higher at 1.2 and the reason for that is because they are a smaller island and anyway, any slight infection, any positive case is obviously going to raise their figures quite substantially, believe it or not. Anyway, their weekly trending at the moment is stable. Um, when it comes to the country as a whole and uh, the stats released yesterday, as for Greece as a whole, the percentage of vaccinations at the moment for the whole of the country is recorded at 41 0.13% uh, of the country has had uh, a, a single dose, while 28.16% of the country has had a uh, has had the double dose. The test positive rate for Greece at the moment is 0.15%, and the rolling weekly rate of uh, per hundred thousand at the moment is only at 6.3. Uh, at the moment uh, and that means that the trending is the weekly trend 
for the country is classed as down. So again, that is uh, good news, all right, for Greece. It's showing that we are now into the safe areas. And hopefully, uh, when Boris starts making his decisions, obviously that will be taken into account. And who knows, we may actually see the Brits arriving here. Right, interesting, as you know, at the moment, there's football going on everywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're watching the European Cup or whether, like here in Greece, there's a lot of football still being played at the moment. Um, the Greek Deputy Sports Minister, uh, Levris Anakas, announced uh, the establishment of a special committee of infectious disease specialists that will deal with the plan to allow vaccinated fans uh, to return to local soccer stadiums. Anyway, the plan for the return of fans is based on a protocol submitted by the Super League. That's like the Premier League here in Greece uh, months ago, which, however, was frozen due to the arrival of the second wave of the pandemic. The protocol will now be updated. And Avakas uh, said, adding that the Super League has postponed, uh, proposed sorry, that vaccinated fans should be allowed to enter the stadium. The deputy minister said the Super League wants vaccinated fans back in its stadiums. Uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm mixed about that. Uh, I, I still feel this is uh, basically... Um, you know, going to create a two-tier system between those who are vaccinated and those who are not vaccinated. I'm I'm waiting to see uh, if there is going to be a spike of infection in London after the Scotland and England game. I had to laugh. There has definitely been a spike in Cornwall after the G7 conference uh, and quite a dramatic spike as well. So uh, Boris got his uh, barbecue on the beach. Biden didn't know he was there, I think, at times. Uh, but he did enjoy the salad, from what I understand. But anyway, it looks like there has been a spike in infection uh, down in Cornwall after the G7. Uh, still waiting for the fallout from uh, the uh, Scotland and England game. I know they left a bit of a mess behind in Leicester Square before they disappeared back to where they'd come from. Uh, but uh, we'll wait and see. However, get this, more football here in Zakynthos. Meanwhile, uh, in Zakynthos, uh, nothing may never be over yet in the terms of winning a championship. Uh, that sounds so British, that phraseology. Uh, but Zakynthos at the moment is a hairbreadth away uh, from winning a league. Uh, the big victory inside the headquarters of Palamas Messini. That's a team over in the Peloponnese uh, where Zakynthos won 1-0. Uh, took the fans of the team out onto the streets. Yeah, they were out on the streets. Uh, many of those on Saturday night were in the port uh, down in town to welcome the potential champions of the uh, ninth group of the third national. Um, now, I'm not sure whereabouts that puts the team if you try to compare it to, I think it puts it in about Division 2 with Premier League, uh, Champions League, and then obviously uh, the next league after that. So it puts them probably in that. And anyway, considering the size of the island and, and the players and everything else, they've done absolutely brilliantly. Anyway, it seems that they were all enjoying their arrival yesterday at the port uh, with slogans such as Zanti, ole ole. <laughs> OK, uh, the B national team, uh, I want to see you go crazy dozens of friends of the team became a tangle with the players and they sang constantly yes no social distancing going on down at the port but i don't give a bollocks to be quite honest at the same time uh, the ship was uh, blowing its whistle as it was preparing to sail for for the largest category uh, the applause from the passengers of the ship was similar uh, when the captain mr galkras took the microphone and in the loudspeakers of the ship spoke about the team and the championship and in fact that the anthem of the association was also played for a while so there you go uh zach and Thos, a little bit of positivity there uh, in that uh, the football is uh, uniting rather than than dividing which is what football should be about all right um anyway another bit of good positive news for this morning it seems that the airline tuss airways has announced new links from israel to zach 
Zakynthos. Now, they're going to be starting these flights from the 5th of July, and they're going to run up until August the 30th. And the company is going to be operating one flight a, flight a week from Tel Aviv, and that's going to arrive today, every Monday, okay? But from the 5th of July, just before those people uh, jump up and down. Um, the flights will be added to those of Wizz Air Operations, uh, European Air Charter and El Al Air Israeli Airlines, who also uh, provide flights here to Zakynthos from Israel. So again, that's another positive uh, boost uh, for tourism with Israel. And one of the reasons the Israelis really love to come and visit the island is uh, because of the history uh, in the fact that is as Zakynthos was the only uh, island under Nazi occupation that all of the Jewish community, the Jewish population here survived the Holocaust. None of them ended up in the camps uh, in, in Auschwitz or anywhere else, uh, Birkenau. Uh, and again, uh, Israel holds Zakynthos in great high esteem. It's a fantastic story. And if you ever get a chance to watch a film called Life is a Smile, uh, grab it and watch it really interesting um documentary all about the survival of the jews here on zakynthos uh, during the nazi occupation so anyway uh moving on then um it seems that the uh, greek labor market showed strong signs of recovery in may according to the uh, labor ministry's uh, hirings register Anyway, last month, uh, 95,166 jobs were created, largely thanks to the impact of the reopening of tourism. Uh, therefore, accommodation created, uh, obviously this they're talking about hotels here and accommodation, that added 44,229 new jobs. Uh, food services added uh, 25,480 and retail commerce provided another 4,814 jobs. Now, compared to last year when the country was emerging from a strict lockdown, if I remember rightly, I think we were emerging from a strict lockdown in May time as well, um, 62,191 more jobs were created this May. However, the comparison with May 2019 shows that 10,118 fewer jobs were created last month. I, 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 do you know what? I'm, I'm not saying these figures are wrong, but I, I just feel that the figures in some ways are just a little bit too too high uh, for for the amount of jobs created. I thought the impact of the pandemic was far worse than what uh, the government spent. But then again, it's like th these figures could be going from the unemployment register of who they're paying out unemployment to. And as always, is not the true reflection of the uh, of unemployment figures as always it's always how do we count the unemployed do we just count those that are taking benefits or do we count those who don't have a job full stop and can't find a job but they're not getting any benefit i ask if that could be the question with some of these figures anyway a similar picture has emerged for uh, january to may 2021 period when 177,108 jobs were created against just 5,826 in the same period last year, but also down from 265,059 in the first five months of uh, 2019. Now, that figure, I've got to be honest, <clears throat> I would say is probably a justifiable figure at uh, 265,000 people. Uh, basically had uh, lost their jobs around about that time in the first five months of the year. I could, I could well believe that at the moment. However, we're going to see what happens. Uh, but last month they said there was uh, 255,998, I'll say that again, 255,987 hirings <coughs> against... 160,000, uh, sorry, 160,821 departures. So uh, that means people going into unemployed. Again, I, I would look at some of those figures uh, and just wondered uh, if they are kind of uh, massaged just a little bit to show good favour. Once again, it must be remembered that Greece is obviously going to be looking for more bailout money from the EU. Uh, you might remember my story yesterday when they were talking about honesty with the banks, about going asking for loans to get your business back up and running again. <clears throat> they want to know everything. 
Uh, however, it doesn't stop the government massaging figures, uh, putting a good spin on the fact that uh, the, uh, the the pandemic hasn't been as bad as first anticipated. It has been bad, let's get it right, but not as bad as first anticipated uh, to justify obviously getting more money from the EU to obviously keep the system running. But at the moment, all we want at the moment is basically more tourists uh, and obviously more people from the UK to come and be able to obviously put money by spending it across the bars, in the hotels, in the restaurants, uh, also in the accommodation, et cetera, et cetera, to obviously put some more money back into the economy. Anyway, and finally, a nice bit of a happy story uh, concerning our neighbours next door uh, on the island of uh, Kefalonia. Uh, nice little article that uh, got uh, press here in uh, Zakynthos. Uh, many teenagers are seizing the opportunity uh, to uh, basically, during the quarantine, uh, to actually volunteer services and to basically uh, organise crowdfunding campaigns uh, for special needs of areas that they show an interest in. Anyway, one of these areas is the area of the hospital on the island of Kefalonia. And a young 14-year-old lad, uh, I'm trying to find his name, actually, uh, Dimitri, that's it, Dimitri Veritas, uh, this little 14-year-old lad, guess what he did? He actually kayaked all the way around the island of Zakynthos, sorry, the island of Kefalonia, which is a pretty big island in comparison to us, that is for sure. Uh, and he managed to raise 17,800 euros, uh, which he said exceeded his original target that he'd set. Anyway, he said, uh, I knew that the island's hospital had had several shortcomings. Uh, one of them was the absence of uh, closed incubators, uh, which were necessary for newborn children. So basically, uh, he basically said, right, I'll get a GoFundMe going, crowdfunding, and uh, raise some money. And he did. He, he, he kayaked all the way around uh, uh, Kefalonia. It doesn't say how, how many miles that is or kilometers that is, but I would say that's a heck of a way to go around in a kayak, uh, especially when the water starts to get a bit choppy. But anyway, uh, the young lad, Dimitri, has also helped the volunteer uh, forest firefighters as well of Kefalonia, in which he uh, also was able to buy new uniforms and also fuel. I think that's for their vehicles as well to obviously assist them in their duties. So what I can say is, well done, young man. Absolutely fantastic. If we can find somewhere to uh, send you a few, Bob, uh, I'll see if I can find a link somewhere. So if anybody wants to drop him something uh, to add to his money that he's raised, absolutely awesome. Right, uh, that's it for the news today. I'm just going to have a quick look to see who's tuning in. Uh, BJ Neil is looking in. Nice to see you. Lovely Hillary Rogers up there in the north end of the island is tuning in as well. Uh, Patrick Michael Carroll is also tuning in. Uh, Mary Haddleberg from Sweden says good morning Ginch have a lovely day and she's given me a nice cup of coffee as well uh, Neil Facier is looking in Dave Matthews he's obviously uh, going to get ready do a bit of fishing somewhere I think once his wife's safely at work he's sneaking out with his rods and he's going to go sit round somewhere I don't know what the weather's like for you guys at the moment but I was hearing all sorts of mixed reports about lots of heavy rain over the weekend in the UK but here just remind you we're getting ready for a heat wave uh, uh uh, it's going to get up to about 41 by the end of the week. That's not going to be fun for anybody. Uh, can I also say thank you to all those people who tuned in to the Northern Soul Show last night. Um, uh, I did a special um, dedicated spot to Dean Parrish, who passed away uh, last week. Uh, he was 79 years of age, an absolutely legendary uh, soul artist on the Northern Soul circuit. Uh, he was even in an episode of The Sopranos. He, he, he was in that as well for a little bit. Uh, but anyway, he passed away age of 79. So there's a, a, a segment in there about his life and about his music. Uh, and also that show is being repeated tonight, 7 p.m. Uh, UK time on beatsradio.co.uk. And interestingly, I've already made my dance anthem show for next week. And I actually did find a dance track from... Uh, Dean Parrish that was done and uh, I've put that into that next coming show so yeah it's been a busy uh, week it's got a busy day today because I'm going to make my uh, my um, Northern Soul show for next week I'm going to be producing that today and uh, 
that means tomorrow, Tuesday, Jane and I will have some time together because uh, she's having a day off tomorrow so i haven't got a clue what we're going to do as long as it's not housework cooking and cleaning i don't care uh but uh, we will find uh, something to do tomorrow anyway that's it from me i will keep my ear close to the ground i do apologize for such a early morning broadcast but sometimes it's best to get it out of the way don't forget you can watch this on catch up either just by playing it back again on Facebook or going into YouTube and uh, watching it on YouTube where all the other broadcasts are stored in a nice, easy and convenient way so that you can go back through past broadcasts and catch up or revisit some of the stories about what goes on here in the island and also what's happening in Greece in general. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for your support and uh, I'll see you again soon. ta -ra.